let's uh, let's jump to your second question. What is the next thing you want to know? Yeah, so I think we just talked about how people find the newsletter, and this one is like one level down. So, what are the some of the best examples of lead magnets or incentives that you've seen for people to to join an email list? Sure, no, non gibby I'm gonna start with. I'm not gonna dodge the question. I am gonna answer it. But I'm going to start with a little mini rant about lead magnets. So in general, I am not a big fan of lead magnets for newsletters. And backing up a second, I consider newsletters and email marketing to be two different things. That in my mind, a newsletter is designed to provide value to an audience. Email marketing is designed to extract value from an audience. Email marketing is spent sporadically usually and designed to lead to and pitch a specific product, whereas a newsletter kind of is the product itself. The irony is a newsletter is probably the strongest form of email marketing that exists. So there is overlap, but when it comes to lead magnets, I don't mind them for email marketing where I'm not going to be sending you a newsletter forever. I'm just trying to surface leads and I'm going to pretty quickly over a sequence of one or two emails or whatever, try to drive you to a sale or a something because that you're just like, get me an email address. If I'm trying to grow, like I don't use new lead magnets for my newsletter because I think a lot of times you get people that sign up because they want the lead magnet. They don't actually want the newsletter. Yeah. The other thing I think is in most cases, if you... Most league magnets aren't actually that good, which is the other problem. But if you create a league magnet that actually really is amazing, you should want as many people to see it. And hiding it behind an email address leads to fewer people seeing it. If your lead magnet's mm. really great, you want everybody to see it. You want them to be able to share it. You'll reach way more people. And within that lead magnet, you plug your newsletter and you'll get, ultimately, you'll get more subscribers and there'll be more valuable subscribers. Because they were like, wow, this article, this resource, this whatever was amazing. Now I want the newsletter, much higher quality versus a lot of people are like, I'm not giving my email address for something. She's just going to spam me with a million things afterwards and whatever. So yeah. so in general, I think, and a lot of times when you see people, they're like, oh, I have this lead magnet and it's going great. And it's, yeah, but a month later, how many of those people are still around? How many of them opened your emails? How many of them gave you a fake email address just to get the lead magnet? Like, I think a lot of it can be fool's gold. That said, that rant aside, it doesn't mean that they don't work. A lead magnet can get you more email addresses and more subscribers. It can get you more leads and more business. So I have my doubts about them and sometimes think, again, if you have something really good that you should want as many people as possible to see it, but that doesn't mean they, they can't work. That said, if you're going to do it, I do think you want to be clear what people are signing up for, right? So that they're going to get the newsletter, even if you do it in their, hey, here's your resource, by the way, would you like to get my newsletter moving forward? Or you're going to get my newsletter moving forward. If you don't want it, just opt out here. Make it easy for people who don't want it to get out of it. Because otherwise, even if they stick, you're sending a bad message and about their trust with you and that kind of thing. Now, all that aside, if you're going to use a lead magnet, a few tips, what I think is the best way to go. And then we'll talk specifically about yours. So one is, I think a big mistake people make is they try their attempt to make their lead magnet seem really valuable becomes really bloated. No one wants a hundred page book. No one wants a three hour video, right? They're like, well, look how valuable it is. And I'm giving it to you just for an email address. No, go the opposite route, make it extremely simple, actionable, and something that gives people an easy, quick win. That's the best thing you can do. They're more likely to download it to give you their email address because no one's like, I don't, I'm not going to read this ebook like for, for 40 pages, but like, oh, it's a one page thing. I'll look at that. Yeah, I want to see that templates, resources, something they can use, not just information, but something they can use and do really quickly. Ideally, that something would also be something that helps them take a step that gets them closer to the product you offer. Like, so it should be related. For example, this may not be quite right, but this is an example of sort of that alignment. If you had a lead magnet that was a questionnaire or a quiz or a thing, that helps someone figure out whether or not they're ready to have their own community or gives them a score of how likely a community is to succeed. 
right? Mm -hmm. Think BuzzFeed, think curiosity, the person that's out there and going, maybe I should have a community, maybe I shouldn't. Oh, I can answer these 20 questions from this community expert. And she's going to come back at me and say, you have a 70% chance of succeeding, or you have a 20% chance you should do X, Y, and Z to get to that place or whatever. And that person that gets that and says, oh, I did this thing. And she says, based on my answers, I have an 85% chance of succeeding. And here's why. Now they're way more interested in your product, in your newsletter, because they're like, yeah, I was right. I should be looking into this, that kind of thing. So that's an example of, it's a little obtuse, but it's an example of the alignment of lead magnet leading directly into your other stuff versus a lead magnet that's just like 20 examples of great thought leaders websites or whatever, like how to write your about page. Like that's fine, but that's, even if it's really good, it's not directly leading into where you ultimately want them to go. So you want to think about it in terms of small, quick wins that you can give someone, things they'd be curious enough about to go, I got to give my email address because I want to see this, right? Something that seems unique. An example, and again, I don't use lead magnets, but this is something I did that would probably work really well as a lead magnet. I wrote a blog post about pin tweets and it included examples of like great pin tweets and what to do with your pin tweet. If I had a newsletter or product that was solely about Twitter growth, I could do it on my own, but if it was solely about Twitter growth, that would be a great lead magnet because I could give people a one-page thing that says, hey, you can look at this thing you're going to see 20 creative uses of things that people are doing with their pin tweets. You're going to get some tips on how to create yours. You give me your email address, you get this one page thing. And five minutes later, you've changed your pin tweet. And you that's what I mean about actionable quick win versus you compare that to, I'll give you my 40 page Twitter growth ebook. And I'm going to spend the first 20 pages talking about what it takes to grow on Twitter. And that's just not the same thing, right? Simple and easy. The other thing is ultimately your products. And the other reason why this is important is ultimately a big part of the friction that prevents people from buying products and services, even if they like it, even if it's selling what they want, even if it seems really good, even if they trust you, they go, ah, this seems like a lot of work. So if you yeah. and the lead magnet have shown them I'm not wasting your time with a bunch of nonsense. This is going to be quick and simple and easy. And look, you just did something. It plants in their mind. That's how you operate and starts to make them assume that that product's not going to be overwhelming and whatever. That product is also going to be not a ton of work. It removes some of that friction. One of the reasons in this podcast, I start off and say every episode and when I came up with the concept, like the whole no fluff, actionable, we're going to get right into it is because I want people to know we're not going to spend the first 30 minutes talking about what you did in kindergarten. I'm sure it's fascinating, but like no one cares. They want to know what you know or what advice I have to you. Let's get into it. And so I think the lead magnet can set the tone for that. With all that in mind, do you have any lead magnets that you're either using or thinking of using? Or something pop I've into had, mind? I don't have any on the site right now, mm -hmm. but if I do a workshop for another community, for example, sometimes they'll create a page that if people sign up on that page, they'll get like access to a workshop that goes deeper into whatever topic I was talking about. And I've done like these custom pages for whatever community I spoke at that their members mm -hmm. can go there. And then that's something that lives in that community that whenever they see that page and want to sign up, they have an extra incentive to sign up for the list. Yeah. And I would think about, as you're thinking about this, I would think about in your course, in your community, in your interactions with people, because you have the advantage of it's already up and running and you've dealt with lots of people. I'm sure you know the things that people on the inside are always like, oh my God, that was so amazing. Like that changed how I thought about this, or I was able to do that. Think about the things that you get the strongest feedback for. And if there are some of them that are like, oh, I could easily turn that into, again, if you're going to do a lead magnet, look for the stuff that you know really resonates with people on the inside of the product and the ways that you can sort of translate that or turn a piece of that into a lead magnet really easily. So you're not just guessing and going, oh, I think people would want this. You go, no, everybody that sees my list of how to do whatever always loves it. And it always, most importantly, like they act on it, they do it, it's quick, it's easy, and it gives them, again, it can be a really small win, 
but something that people can feel like I gave her my email address. She gave me this thing. I did it. And 24 hours later, that's why I use the pin tweet example, right? Because it's really basic. And 24 hours later, you go, I have a better pin tweet than I had before. And even if it's not better, I at least feel like I'm being smarter about it and I'm being strategic and know what I'm doing. And that's a really good, powerful feeling for people because that's part of what they're ultimately buying from you down the road. Yeah, that was a helpful reframe for me. And I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about it a little differently after this mm-hmm. conversation. I think it could be because I the newsletter, I also basically post whatever I send in the email as a blog post on the mm-hmm. site. So it's all there. And that is something that people find like through SEO or through other people linking to it. And I could see like a, a lead magnet, but something a resource that is within a post yep. goes deeper into something or is like an easier way for you to implement the thing that the post is talking about. And then the person's already reading it. So it's not like a random person that just wants to download a thing. Like they're, yep. they're interested in the newsletter because they were just reading a post from it. Yeah. And here's way. another example. And I don't know that this a hundred percent fits with what you do and what you teach, but just hypothetically, right? If part of what you teach is how to help community leaders get engagement from their community in their posts, you could go, hey, here's a cheat sheet of 10 proven like templates for questions you can ask that'll drive engagement. So for the people that already have communities, go, all right, I'm going to download these 10 questions. And tomorrow I'm going to post one of these questions in my group. And again, assuming the stuff is good, they're going to go, oh, holy shit. Everybody's suddenly engaging. She knows what she's talking about. I should do more of this. So that might be an example of a sort of simple thing that that you could do. Yeah. Cool. cool. 